During blood testing, a sample of five donors' blood donations are combined into one vial for the purpose of testing for disease. If the vial tests negative, all five donations can be used for blood transfusions. If the vial tests positive, all five donations individually must be tested to determine which of the five donations are contaminated. If the rate of disease in the population is 1%, what is the probability that all five donations will need to be tested individually? Okay, so it's a probability question, and this is probably that all five donations will need to be tested individually. So I want to write down a probability statement here, just listing what they're saying. They say, find the probability that all five, um, so this is donations, we'll say samples, all five samples of blood, basically. So all five samples will need to be tested. Okay, so probability that all five samples will need to be tested. So that's what we're looking for in this problem. All right, so when I read this problem, you know, it's kind of devoid of great keywords. It doesn't really give me much to work with. I know it's a probability problem, and I know that we're going to be looking at five samples, so um, probably we'll have some multiplication rule nestled into this problem somewhere, but I'm not sure exactly how I should do it. For example, I'm pretty sure that if I put um, five spaces and try to work it out that way, it won't work because... You know, I'm not really clear on what this means. It says all five samples will need to be tested. So I should probably think about that a little more and try to see if I can come up with a good way to explain that in another way that's more helpful. So what they mean by this, all five will need to be tested, what they're doing is this blood bank is putting a bunch of samples. So it's basically five individual donations are put into one vial, and then that vial is tested. If that vial turns out to be negative, it must mean what? that all the five bloods that are involved in the sample are clean and healthy. If the vial comes back positive, though, then they're going to have to test every single individual donation that went in there, right? So all the little individual samples of blood that went into the vial, they have to be tested to see which one is the culprit or which of them are the culprit, because there could be more than one that's a culprit, right? So when I write this out, I'm going to say, well, this is really the same as saying the probability that... Um, the vial tests positive, right? If the vial tests positive, then I would have to test all the five individual samples. So now I have to think about this and say, hmm, well, what does it mean for the vial to test positive? What does that actually mean? How does that actually happen? You know, in the actual real world scenario, you know, this blood bank here is uh, receiving blood, puts five bloods into a vial, five samples of blood in a vial, and they test it. If it tests positive, what does that mean? Does it mean that one blood of the sample in the group is positive? Does it mean two are positive? Does it mean three are positive? How would I say that? I think the most uh, accurate way to describe this would be to say that what? At least one, at least one sample is positive, right? Or in other words, at least one sample is contaminated, right? Is contaminated. So at least one sample is, let's cross that out and say contaminated. So that way we're using the language of the problem because they use the phrase contaminated, right? So at least one sample is contaminated. All right, and that's basically it, right? Because it's not exactly one sample being contaminated. It's at least one sample being contaminated. It only takes one. It could be more though. It could be two samples or three or four or all five that are contaminated. Then the vial would test positive, but it only takes one. Not exactly one, because in probability, if you say exactly one, you mean only one. But of course, it could also test positive by having two samples be contaminated or three or four or five, right? So the proper statement is to say at least one. And once we've said that, we've really done the hard part of the problem, because at that point we know hey, look, if the probability of at least one sample is contaminated is what we're looking for, then we have this rule that says 1 minus the probability of none. None what? None are contaminated. None are contaminated. That's really what we're looking to find in the end. If we can solve this, we can solve the problem.
So kind of the lesson here is that when you get into a problem like this that doesn't have a lot of great keywords, you know, try to see if you can get it down to something that uses the phrase at least one. Because very often these probability of at least one problems, they try to um, kind of hide that they're those kinds of problems. And they do that on purpose because they want to see us thinking and making sure we're reasoning through the problem and really thinking about what has to happen. So. In order for all, all five samples to be tested, the vial has to test positive. In order for the vial to test positive, that means at least one of the samples that's mixed in that vial is contaminated. And if it's at least one sample is contaminated, then we can solve that by saying one minus the probability none are contaminated. So now we just have to tackle this. And that's actually, believe it or not, a much easier problem to do. Because in order to do that, we'd say, well, look, None are contaminated. That means they're all doing the same thing, right? None of them are contaminated. In other words, they're all clean. There's five samples. So I will have a straight multiplication rule to solve that. I'll have five little spaces to put my probabilities. And then I will fill in the probability that the bloods are not contaminated. So I just have to figure out what that is now. Well, let's see. In the problem, we have the probability of contaminated, right? The probability of contaminated. They tell me that's 1%. That's 0 0.01. So we can figure out the probability that something is not contaminated. And that's going to be 100% minus 1% or 99%. Or in other words, 1 minus 0 0.01 gives you 0 0.99. So I know that the probability that each individual sample there is not contaminated is 99%. So the probability that none of them are contaminated I'll have, well, 99% that the first random sample is not contaminated, 99% chance the next one is not contaminated, so on and so forth. This is an independent probability, right? We don't have to worry about um, dependency here because these blood donors are unrelated. They're taken randomly from the population of blood that's been donated, they've been put into a vial, and they're going out for testing. So at this point, we would assume that um, they're independent. We can just multiply straight across. So finally then, the calculation will become 1 minus 0.99 to the fifth power. Let's see what that works out to be using our calculator. So 1 minus 0.99 raised to the fifth power, and we end up with the answer 0.049%, right? Or for, sorry, 0 0.049, or as a percent, 4.9%. So a little under 5% chance. So what's the probability the blood bank will have to test all five samples from a vial of blood? About 5% of the time. It's very helpful for this uh, blood bank to know because most blood banks are probably nonprofit, right? Which means they gotta keep their cost controlled, they gotta keep their cost down. So by combining five samples into one vial, what happens is that whenever that vial tests negative, they can just send those five samples of blood, those bags of blood that were taken from the donors, they can send them off to the hospitals to be used for donation safely. Um, and so they only have to worry about this scenario where they actually have to test each individual sample to see which ones were contaminated only about 5% of the time. So this, this is a good thing for them because they know now they can say, well, gee, well, we're only going to have to test all five donors' bags of bloods 5% of the time. The other 95% of the time, we can get by with just testing one vial that's comprised of five samples from five different donors. So that means 95% of the time, they will only have to pay, say, a fifth of the cost to test the blood. And 5% of the time, they'll have to bear the full cost of testing all five samples. So that's really, really a powerful bit of information. So this is a place, an example, where you can definitely use this number to help make decisions in the world around you. Now the company can budget to see how much it will cost them to end up testing the blood to make sure it's safe before they send out. And now they can know what their operating cost will be.